Hi, welcome to this second video in this series of four videos to do with some basic skills around MuScore. Um, this is an arrangement task and in this video I'm looking at some basic harmony skills. Um, it is a um, follow-on to the last video, so if you haven't checked out the melody video, go check that one out. Okay, but this one is to do with harmony. So, um, what is harmony is probably the first thing I should just address. Um, harmony in its simplest form is when you have two or more notes happening at once. So in the last video we looked at how to add some melody notes and so that's our first line of uh, notes and in this video we're working out notes that will work with that um, part. So this will give you a method of doing this um, and hopefully it will help you create or start creating some harmony notes to anything that you might create. So let's jump into MuseScore. Okay, so I've opened up my previous file that I had been working on and we're going to be adding to this. So again, if you have not um, got your complete um, 12 bars of the Twinkle Twinkle Star Melody, um, go away, get that finished and then pop back here because we're going to be adding notes to all of those notes on a new instrument. So, the first thing we need to do is add a new instrument track. Now there's two ways we can go about doing this. One is going over to the Instruments tab here, and we can hit the Add button, and when we press that, we get this pop-up screen. Another way, which is a useful shortcut to know about, is if you press the I key on your computer, it brings up that. So I for Instrument brings up this same diagram. Okay, so for this task, I'm going to do two examples of two different instruments. Um, we're going to add the clarinet, and I'm going to find the piano that's under keyboards and add that one. Okay, so I've got both of those added in there. So, now, let's talk about the clarinet. Okay, now, I'm going to untick this button down here and you're going to notice something change. By default, when you add the clarinet, you're going to see these sharps. Now, the clarinet is a transposing instrument, and there's a few other instruments that are also transposing that you may happen to pick. So if you pick an instrument that's got sharps or possibly flats here, you may want to change it to concert pitch, and that will mean that if you use this method, the notes that you'll pick will work, um, and it will sound quite nice. Okay, If you haven't picked concert pitch, um, it might make it a little bit complicated in creating arrangements. So watch out for that button down there. If you've used version 3 of this program, um, the concert pitch is in a different location. So feel free to message me if you're still using that version. Okay, um, now we've got the clarinet. Let's look at the piano though. Um, the piano, we won't need the bass clef notes. Okay, so we're just going to deal with the treble clef. So if you pick an instrument that's got bass clef, um, I recommend for this little task, pick an instrument that has um, a treble clef. So we can actually remove that. So let's come over here onto this sort of thing with all the instruments that you've got. So this is where you can do a few things. If you wanted to hide an instrument, we can click on the little I button here. And now my clarinet part is hidden. But if I come down to these arrows, this gives you some attributes about the different clefts that you might have with these instruments. So if I hide the bass clef, now the piano bass clef is now gone. Okay, so for this task, I just need the treble clef one. If later on I wanted to add that back, I could simply come back and click the button and I'll have it back again. Okay, so hiding it is a useful thing. Now, I'm actually going to use the piano, but not the clarinet. So the way you can delete an instrument, I'll show you that one as well. So I'm going to press that I key again, because I like the shortcut. And over here, this is where you've got your list of instruments in your score. So we can remove them from here as well. So when I click on the clarinet, I can click this trash can button. And then I commit to that, click OK. And now I've just got the flute melody, and I've got the piano part which I'm about to add. Okay, so now we want to look at what notes can work with our melody notes. Now I've got a bit of a diagram that can help us, so let's bring that up. So I've now got my treble clef notes here, so hopefully this might help you out 
if you're weak with knowing the treble clef note information. So let's look at our flute part. I have got this note down below the star with a line through it. So let's go over to our diagram. And here we go, we've got C. So my first note in the flute part is a C. Now we're going to look at thirds. Thirds are a great way of creating harmony to your music. Okay, they're known as an interval. An interval and we're going to look at either a third above or a third below. Depending on the type of third, you're going to have happy sounding thirds and sad sounding thirds. And that's about as deep as I'm going to go with the theory on this one. So working up my third, so I've got C, that was our flute note. We're going to go three up, so count C as one. So C is one, D is two, E is three. So I could put E in as my piano first note. I could also look at thirds below. So if I count C as 1 again, B is 2, A is 3. So I could put A in as my third below as a choice. And they'll both have a very different sound. So for this one, let's just put in the E above. So selecting notes, remember we've got to select the pencil. And then I come down here and I can click in my note. Okay. And since I've got another C, I'm going to put a second one there. Let's have a little bit of a listen to this. I'll do that again. So hopefully you can see the harmony between the um, first two notes and then you heard the flute go back by itself. So let's do another example. So in the flute part we've got a note on the second line. So let's go to our diagram. That happens to be a G. We could go a third above, so G being one, two, three, B would be my third above. And going below, G, F, E, E would be my third below. So let's see what those two options sound like. So let's try the B. Let's have a listen to that one. Okay, now let's see what that would sound like going below. Now behind my camera, I've got an undo button, so I'm going to click that and then put that E in down below. Let's see what this option sounds like. Now I don't mind that one, so I'm going to keep that one. Now my next note in the flute, I've got the second space up there. The second space was A. So A, a third above, I could have A, B, C. C would be my third above. And below A, I'd have A, G, F. So I might check out going below this time. So I'm going to put the Fs in. And then check that. I'm liking how this is going. So now I've got my next note. And I'm going to use another minimum just like in my melody track. And I had a note this four, so if I look back here, I've got a G. Okay, so I might use that same E again. So I'm going to put that in, and I've got that one. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, that's starting to sound pretty good. So don't forget, you can have a bit of an experiment with this. Try thirds above, try thirds below. Um, I wouldn't recommend going above, below, above, below and jumping around that much because um, there is a, a formal name for something where you might cross parts and um, it starts to sound a little bit um, disjointed and sometimes the main melody can disappear if you jump above the melody and then below it too much. Okay, so just be conscious of those things. You could check out things like fourths and sixths um, and try the other intervals that you might have away from the main note and see what sort of sounds you can create. Um, but I find you might come back to the thirds. Thirds tend to be quite safe in making sound, something sound quite nice. Okay, so I think that's nearly all for now. So hopefully you've been able to learn a simple method of creating harmony, um, either thirds above or thirds below your main melody. Um, hopefully this has been helpful. And once you've finished this, don't forget to save it. Um, and if you're one of my students, don't forget to submit this so I can check that you've shown that you can understand how to create thirds, either above or below your melody. Um, don't forget also hit the um, subscribe button 
and also hit the like button so that you'll um, let everybody else know that this has been an informative way of learning how to create harmony in your music. Um, don't also forget to check out the next video when that comes up. This one, next one will be on embellishment and how to do a basic form of embellishment to make your arrangement sound more fancy. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening.